so yeah, so as I said, I'll make these slides available and you can read through the kind of, um, the kind of overview bit at the beginning. Um, but I thought it was probably worth um, talking about specific examples where we've used um, gate and associated technologies for um, kind of mining larger scale corpora. Uh, and then I'll have a, a few notes at the end, as I say, about the actual um, tools themselves. So the first one um, was a project we did with the National Archives at Kew. Um, and they're responsible, as well as obviously keeping uh, historical documents, they're responsible for a lot of electronic data. And one of those things is archiving all public government websites. And they do this on a, a rolling basis. At the time we did this project, <coughs> which was a few years ago now, uh, they were crawling every website um, published by any government um, department agency um, at least every four months, um, sometimes more often. Certainly around the election, they were trying to do it a lot more frequently. Uh, and each crawl is independent, so they don't look for what's changed since last time, they just take a brand new copy. So you can imagine that this grows, is huge already and grows very, very quickly. Um, and using um, kind of standard keyword searching isn't very helpful because you end up with, you know, 100 copies of the same page coming back as the first 100 hits because they're all being crawled from the same site. Um, so what we did was we used, a, we used Gate to develop a, a pipeline for doing essentially semantic annotation. Um, so we were looking specifically for entities, uh, there were some relationships as well, uh, but looking for people, companies, locations, government departments, ministerial positions, um, official documents, so this is things like government white papers, green papers, things like that, uh, dates, money, uh, measurements, um, and where possible all these things were being linked to an ontology, uh, which was initially based upon DBpedia but then was significantly enriched uh, with a lot of stuff that TNA was specifically interested in being able to expose. So this was all around things like um, the structure of government, the position, ministerial positions, who holds which position, uh, how do these things change over time so you can find not just documents that mention um, the uh, Minister of State, for instance, but the people who held that job over time as well. Um, and as I said, we were, we, this was all indexed to allow for um, complex querying, and I'll, hopefully if I have time at the end I'll come back and show you some examples. Uh, but they wanted to be able to essentially look at um, opening up for political researchers, um, so that was their, their kind of aim. Uh, a slightly different one, uh, medical records. Uh, we've been doing this with um, a hospital in uh, the South London Maudsley Hospital, uh, and they have a large amount of um, medical records that, are, that they have uh, in a system called CRIS. Uh, it was in the news the other year when there was the health uh, care data thing as being an example of how joining the records helps. Uh, and this is um, mostly psychiatry um, data, but it's basically letters between the hospitals and GPs, uh, summary of discharges, um, records of events of things that went on while people were in the hospital. Um, and some of these documents contain information that's not recorded anywhere else. Uh, doctors don't like filling in forms. Uh, I'm sure many of us don't, but doctors appear to be specifically bad at it. Uh, and even though often there are specific fields for things, they tend to get left blank and everything goes in the text. So you end up with a lot of data uh, that's not available. Um, so as I say, the South London's Mosley Hospital, specifically <coughs> the uh, biomedical research centre <coughs> there, uh, we've been working with them to develop a number of applications to kind of try and make use of this. Uh, resource. So um, applications for things like detecting test results, so uh, mental state tests was one that's uh, a commonly reported thing and there is a, form, a formal uh, field on the form for it but it's nearly always blank uh, and what they wanted to be able to do was essentially track how people's mental um, state deteriorated uh, over time. Um, possibly tracking with other things that we were looking for, so things like education level, um, does it affect um, people's um, uh, progression through a disease? Uh, whether they'd smoked in the past. Uh, this was an interesting one because they were only interested in people smoking cigarettes. They weren't interested in them smoking anything else, which made it a little interesting. Um, medication history. So again, this is finding all drugs, um, dose information, frequency, when it started, stopped, uh, and tracking that over time. Uh, and the one that they're currently working on is looking at uh, psychiatry records and using a lot of the data extracted with these other ones and some machine learning uh, to then see if they can work out um, whether they can use prior data to, to predict suicides and the hope that they'll be able to spot suicide risks earlier from the free text <coughs> um, So uh, context web preservation, which I guess uh, being a library is a, an interesting one. Uh, this is the project I'm working on at the moment. 
uh, it's a big EU funded project with partners, I think there's 11 partners across the EU. Um, and the idea is that instead of just archiving a, a document um, on its own with no idea of where it's, you know, other than the kind of um, metadata you get when you create it as to who the author was and when it was created, uh, was to try and determine a much wider context. So we're talking about, um, for you know, newspaper articles, you're talking about the mentions of people, places, organisations, that people, you know, if you look at it in 10, 15 years' time, you may not know who those people were. So we're talking about that kind of context. Uh, and what we're wanting to do is be able to kind of determine what that context is from the text, package it up, and then archive it along with uh, the documents so that when you want to come back and look at it, um, you have that wider context and it's useful because obviously things like personal organisational memory fades over time. So you know, you look at an old photo that maybe your parents or grandparents took, you may not know who the people in it were. Um, and that's the kind of context we'd like to uh, try, try and archive. Um, as I say, we have partners doing the image analysis side, but we're doing uh, text and we're, we're currently working with um, DBpedia for dealing with real world, world context. Uh, but we have two use cases, a, a kind of personal information management one and then um, uh, an organisational use case where the, the systems, the use case tools are building kind of ontologies of information as they go along as new data is fed in and we're using that for helping with determining the context. Uh, and then the last of the four examples, um, this again was, was kind of slightly different and it comes back to the uh, mining biomedical literature stuff that came up earlier. So we were working with the World Health Organization in uh, Lyon, their cancer research center. Uh, and they carry out these genome-wide association studies. Now these are actual kind of you know, wet lab tests, blood samples and things. Um, trying to work out which kind of um, genetic variations are likely to give rise to a specific form of cancer. Um, and obviously, these kind of studies are expensive. They take an awful lot of time. You have to find enough participants. There's a, there's a reasonable cost involved with doing them. Uh, and what they wanted to look at was could they use previously published literature to help them hone in on specific uh, variations to kind of narrow down um, the, the field, as it were, and hence cost them less. Um, so what we were doing was we were looking at um, documents from PubMed. Um, we started with just the, the abstracts, but we did do some work on the full text documents that we could get hold of. Um, and we did two kind of um, studies. We looked back at a previous study uh, and worked out that we'd have been able to save over a year's worth of lab work and about a million and a half euros. Uh, and then we did another study with them, uh, which was the interesting one, which was on a, a form of oral cancer, which is rare enough that actually finding enough people with the disease to do the lab tests would be very, very difficult. Uh, but with the statistics generated from the, the text mining, uh, we were able to, um, to find a new uh, variation that had not been seen before that was nicely um, accepted. Um, so what do all these four examples have in common? Um, they're all essentially based around the open source tools that we've been developing in Sheffield and giving away for the last 20 years-ish. Um, so the main part of this is Gate, which some of you may have heard of before. Uh, so this is a framework essentially for text engineering. Um, on its own, it's a framework, it doesn't do much, but it comes with a whole bunch of plugins. Uh, 78 when I checked yesterday. Um, see some of why that's important on the next slide. Um, GCP, which is the Gate Cloud Paralyzer, so this again is for doing lots of work quickly, making as much use of machines and stuff as you have. Uh, and then Mimir, which is our fairly new um, indexing and search system. And this is what we're using with the National Archives, being able to kind of combine the text, the ontologies, um, and all the other data into a single search, uh, which will be the basis of the demo if it works in a second. Um, so the point about Gate as, a, as an architecture is it's got plugins for popular toolkits. So you, if you're happy already using some of these things, you can combine them together. You don't have to write a lot of the kind of glue code to the Stanford Core NLP, Apache Open LP, Linkpipe, your email WordNet, the list goes on. Um, different text styles, so it's not just about newswire text. Uh, biomedical stuff in there, social media, there's a specific plugin for Twitter. Uh, lots of different language support. Uh, and as was mentioned earlier, obviously a large uh, community of, of users as well, which, uh, which kind of helps. And you can find all this and more at the, uh, at the website. So now, if I can uh, find a browser, I will try and quickly. For about a minute. Minute, minute maybe. <laughs> uh, this is where things go wrong.
as I say, I'll make these slides available later, so you should be able to um, go and play with these things if you like anyway. Um, but the idea is that, um, as I said, what you want to be able to do is combine all this thing in something that's easy to, to search and use, and it won't be helpful if the passwords. Um, so the idea here is that we indexed, um, it was about 3,000 documents, I think, that were taken from the BBC's news website a few years ago, just as a, a kind of demo. And they allow you to search for you know, um, kind of standard keyword stuff. So I have a feeling he's in, he's in there. Um, so you can easily find things like that. We had examples of um, people being quoted. Uh, so um, it's not so where you can whether you can all see this, but essentially what we're looking for is Gordon Brown and then some form of the verb to say within a few, a few words. Um, and as I say, we can combine this with um, annotations as well, instead of just words, so we can look for person. Um, we should find lots of people being quoted. And my final example, which hopefully won't run over the minute too long, um, is this one assuming it pulls back. So what this is doing is this is finding all people who are listed in uh, DBpedia as being a member of the Labour Party saying something in documents um, published after the beginning of 2011 in the section of the BBC's website for Scotland. <laughs> um, so you can see that all that stuff kind of comes together in one index that you can search and, and kind of really drill down into these large collections where you'd never be able to find some of these things by just straightforward keyword search. And there we go. Excellent. Thank you.